most powerful man in the state because he'd been there 27 years. So um, those are some groups that I'm involved with, that one. And, of course, I got my own political Woodstock. I like to document. And I think there's a lot of power in documentation. If you're listening and you have a camera and you want to start using it, please do. Go to your city council or alderman or, you know, just regular events when they're in public. Yeah, we have and yeah, we have, an, uh, we have a lady here that does quite a bit of that. Actually, we have two of them, Jenny Warburg, who mm-hmm. were written for everybody from our local paper, The Independent, to The New York Times, and she does a lot of still photography documentation. And we also have Katina Parker, who is a documentarian filmmaker, and Rodrigo oh, that's Dorfman. great. So all three of them are definitely, and they're just three of those that have come to my mind, but there are others as well. So we are definitely having things documented on a regular basis. So that is very much of a positive thing. I was wondering... Are you having any luck? Because I know that um, in parts of Oklahoma, there's also an active, um, not just African-American community, but an active Native American community. So I was wondering how they are doing in terms of being mobilized and things of that nature, because I do know that in the past there was an active community. Now, whether it's still active in Oklahoma, that I don't know. Well, the AIM movement is still here. Uh, In the Democratic Party, they're having some Native American women caucuses occurring, and that's a good development. Uh, we have the Diamond Pipeline, if I don't know if you've heard about that. And we're actually getting success. There's a lot of money being pulled out because they do not want to face the protests, like what was done in, uh, was it South Dakota or North Dakota? Yes, yeah, South, yeah, South Dakota, I believe, with the, uh, yeah. the um, pipeline. You know, so that is really good, that they're pulling out even before the fight starts and yeah, it's a difficult state to live in. We're 50th in the nation for education, 49th in health of women, but we're second in the nation for uh, teenage pregnancy, and this is what kills me. We're first in the nation, used to be the world also, for female incarceration. We're also second in the nation for male incarceration. We have a problem. We have that's a big problem. Uh, y'all are first in the nation for the amount of females that are incarcerated. Now, what kind of right. chances are these? They're mostly being a lot of them are with. drug problems, uh, drug issues, or maybe they their husband got in trouble, then they get in trouble too. Husband goes to jail, so do they. You know, it's it's just messed up. I, I, the Bronx Defenders have camped out in Tulsa because we are the worst of the worst. You know, there's a lot of racial profiling that happens. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. That happens. I've seen it happen. I, well, we'll stake out the DUI uh, checkpoints, and they treat people differently by the shade of their skin, if you know what I'm saying. Right. And we get it on video. We get it on a video. And the attorneys will call us. That When the person gets an attorney, they call us because they know we take video of those checkpoints. But it's difficult. Wow. Uh, the Native American people. Uh, my daughter is Katua Cherokee. We have a lot of different tribes here in Oklahoma. But I'm seeing right. some better responses now, especially with the, the Diamond Pipeline. That's really woke a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely folks have to stay awake and stay mm-hmm. in tone with what's going on, not just in their neighborhood, but in uh, like-minded communities and, neighbor- and just around the world as well. Um, I had another question for you. Oh, you were talking about the education, because when I think of bad education, I usually think of places like Mississippi and... Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, Mississippi. They can say, now they can say, thank God for Oklahoma. We are the absolute last. Actually, we're 57th, if you can include the territories. We are absolute last. At the absolute bottom and everything. Yes, the teachers have even taken to panhandling so they can get supplies for the kids. We have seen wow. teachers out on the street corners saying, please help me get supplies. It's that bad. And I mean, that's not a joke. That's not a – it's not a joke. Right. That's not a joke at all that you have to be resulting to the teachers going there and doing things mm-hmm. of that nature. Now, was this one of the states, um, and if so, did he manage to uh, get that um, predominant uh, white vote that actually Trump managed to – carry into his wing or was this a state oh that- he loves oklahoma every single district voted for trump and we only wow. have three democratic counties out of 78 it's tough here if you're a democrat like myself and but we're starting to get some state seats we got one that was 80 percent republican we switched it to democrat 
you know, people are starting to wake because of, it, it's difficult to live in Oklahoma if you're a woman, if you're a working person, if you're a person of color. You know, it's hard. Wow. So, uh, so what was the reasons when you got out and uh, done some of your activism work that folks were given for wanting to vote for somebody that it seemed to have been so much more reactionary than some of our past? Uh, president of Ben. Um, so was it just because they felt that uh, they had lost so much during the uh, Obama administration, or was it? Well, there seems to be this hypnotic hold that the Republican Party has on Oklahoma. For the last presidential three, the three last presidential elections, every single district voted for the Republican candidate. Not one district voted for Obama. Not one. You know, and this has been three presidential elections running that they voted for the Republican Party. Uh, Scott, the guy who's over the climate, the, um, oh, God, what's the word? He's from Oklahoma. The guy who's over NASA now, he's a gym. uh, These are all very far-right people, extremely far-right people. You know, uh, the Scott Pruitt guy, he believes in... That God created, He really believes in the what? What do you call it? It's not evolution. It's the. Um, I'm sorry, I had to take some medicine. Creationism. Yes, yes, he's a creationist, and, you know, and he's over the the climate and just so this is EPA. The so EPA. Talking, that's okay. Say so. We're talking about the person that's in charge of the EPA mm-hmm. is the one that believes in creationism and really does not, from what I understand. Oh, and he even sued the EPA when he was in Oklahoma. He sued the EPA, and now he's in control of it. I mean, it's just, Hmm. no, I have no words. All I know is to get people registered to vote and get them in the habit of voting. That's important, you know, and absentee voting is most important because that's how you can win elections. That's what a lot of Republicans do, absentee voting. Right. It's much easier to do it by absentee. I'm actually, I yes. vote that way in all elections. You don't have to worry about having ID. You don't have to worry about going to the poll and they're, they're not being able to find your name. You don't have to wait in long lines. Uh-huh. You get your you get your ballot almost two months before the election, so you're able to vote, put a stamp on it, send it back to the Board of Elections, and that's it, you know, and it makes it so much easier. Well, I don't need to need to monopolize. You know, sometimes oh, words just. I'm, I'm tired. I guess I didn't mean to no. monopolize your show. I feel like I am. So no, you're not I, monopolizing there... it at all. We definitely appreciate your uh, calls, and like I said, we're expecting a couple of other folks to call in as well. Um, one of the things I'm just curious about, and I don't always ask this question, but I don't mean to ask it of the South Dakota person. But how did you hear about our show? Well, I'm tired today, so I'm not at the courthouse. I'm not documenting. But I can't (laughs) seem to just stay away. And so I looked on Blog Talk Radio to see if anybody was talking about activism, you know, getting out there and doing things, and I saw your show. And it sounded really good, so I called in. So that's how I found you. But I do have one thing. Have you guys watched the documentary called Vaxxed, V-A-X-X-E-D? No. What? No, I have not. What, what, is it, what is it about? Well, Vaxxed is on Amazon right now, Amazon Prime, where you, it's like Netflix. Uh-huh. Uh, it's about the CDC whistleblower, Dr. William Thompson. I used to be an insider. I had worked with Dr. Hooker. And um, it's the MMR vaccine that's the most problematic, especially for African-American toddlers, male toddlers, excuse me, 36 months okay. of age and younger, I, I mm-hmm. think. We even got Tony Muhammad from the Nation of Islam to help us, and he showed it to their entire, I don't know if it was a convention, it was a a big gathering that they have every so often. So there was a big to-do about that, and I was very, the more education we get out there, this is worse than Tuskegee. If you knew how bad Tuskegee experiment was, Mm -hmm. this is worse. Yes. So. This is going to work. One other question I was going to ask you real quick, and then I said I just got a text from Solomon, so hopefully sure. you can call me in as well. Was, um, you said that it was difficult on one level because, of course, on the national level, 
you've had these uh, Republican shootings in and all the time. How has it been on the state and the local level? Has there been any breakdown in the progressive front on either the state or the local level that you've been able to see at least some sort of victory in Tulsa? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, our state made a record for the largest number of anti-LGBTQAI bills to be pushed through. None of them made it. We defeated each and every one, and there was over 30 of them. Uh, there's not a lot of progress right now. Other than, I will say, our mayor, love our mayor, G.T. Bynum, he just uh, presented a plan for a Tulsa City jail where it's just 30 beds, no one stays past in longer than 10 days. But if you get arrested and you need to see the judge right away, so they don't have to wait five months or six months, which is the current wait right now. It's so backlogged. But if the city controls the jail, then it'll be much faster. And I'm very excited about that. Yeah, well, people can like keep their real... jobs now. Yeah, that sounds like a very progressive move by the uh... City of Tulsa the mayor. and your mayor. So, so that's yes, very good I am very that pleased with that. So. And uh, if folks wanted to get involved with some of the organizations that you're involved with, do any of these organizations, or if they just want to get in touch with you to learn more about them, are there any uh, organizational uh, websites? Well, my um, more documenta- documentary right now, um, Political Woodstock. I have a YouTube channel. It's called Political Woodstock. I have a Facebook page called Political Woodstock. Um and then we the people Oklahoma, I think it's I think it's dot org. We mm-hmm. the people Oklahoma dot org and you can find out more information about Mark Lewis. That's M A R Q Lewis. Mark Lewis. Uh he was a uh, man of the year for Tulsa, Tulsa citizen of the year. Then he was the Oklahoman of the year. And he came from your neck of the woods. He's an incredible person, has strong organization skills, and, I mean, that's what I would say. Yeah. Oh, also, I have been involved with the Black Wall Street Times. It's an online newspaper. It's brand new. Nehemiah Frank is the CEO and editor-in-chief. Again, that's the blackwallstreettimes.com. That's a really great place to see what's happening in Tulsa some progressive ideas and maybe reporting on what's not going well, you know, things like that. Speaking of things that might be going well or not going well, how is, because um, one of the things I referenced in our rally that we had here in Durham on Friday was that there was a lot of unity across uh, boundaries. So how is that? Have you been able to see a um, good uh, connection between the different different folks oh, that are yes. fighting? They might be from different parts of different platforms so like the, uh, folks in the LGBT community organizing with the straight and the We have a lot of coalitions. We have a lot of coalitions because if they come for one of us, they're going to come for all of us. That's our motto. Right. You know, no matter what aspect you are in the activism world uh, as far as Tulsa, if they come for one of us, they're going to come for you too. So we, we right. back each other up. Even if we have differences on what another person might believe, we're there for you so you do not get harmed. So I'm very pleased to to see that. Yeah, that's very good because that's actually what we saw even here in Durham. Like I said, I know for a fact oh, there were people there that were, oh, there's probably Solomon. There were people there that were like um, activists that were from uh, the Bernie camp as well as the uh, mm-hmm. Hillary camp. There were people there that were from the LGBT community, but there were also people there from like some of the more conservative churches and everything. So, and there was definitely black, that's white, uh, brown, and Red and so all of the people were there of different nationalities, different orientations. Mm-hmm. And when they just heard that the Klan was coming, it was like a big rally around. I think and it, was, it was the wonders of social media because most of the word came through social media. And uh, even as this rumor that they were coming to town was happening, that just brought a whole massive amount of people into our downtown Durham area, as if to say, not on our watch. Mhm. Not in my city. Yeah. Exactly. So well, thank positive. you for having me on. And it sounds like you've got another caller coming in. I do well, appreciate it. I thank appreciate you. it. And we look forward to you coming back and, and keep on listening to the voice of the people. We greatly appreciate you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. All right. Appreciate you. Mr. Solomon Burnett. 
Yes, sir.